Hello, I'm Finn Polstra. And I'm Rachel Polstra. Welcome to our Sunday worship service with St. John's United Church of Georgetown and Glen Williams. Today is April 19th, and we welcome you with open hearts and with open minds. Spring is here, and the daffodils are blooming, and we wish you a beautiful day. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Thank you, Rachel and Finn, for that wonderful welcome. Rachel and Finn are part of our greeters team, a group of people who will welcome you warmly as you come through the door of St. John's. We thought, what a wonderful way to begin our service today. Our service today will be focusing on the story of Doubting Thomas. I'd like to thank Carolyn, Catherine, Lois, Rob, David, Jennifer, Mark, and Marcia for their gifts today. And a special thank you to Mandy Thompson for allowing us to use her song. Let us pray. All loving God, as we come together today, may we awaken knowing that the sun has risen once again. We didn't have to ask, it just rose for us. Christ does the same for us. Christ has come alive for us. So as we go about our days, in the sanctuary of our homes, may we know that the peace of Christ sits with us, sits within us. A peace that is sometimes hard to name, but it's here on our breath, on our fingertips, on our tongues, on our ears, in our eyes. Christ's peace is here. Listen and feel. May the peace of Christ be with us all. Amen.
Good morning. I'm reading today's scripture from John 20, verses 19 to 31. The story where Jesus meets the disciples after rising from the dead and later meets with Thomas, who doubts that Jesus is alive. Listen. That evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors in fear of the Jewish leaders, when suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. After greeting them, he showed them his hands and sighed, and how wonderful was their joy as they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, the twin, was not there at the time with the others. When they kept telling him, We have seen the Lord, he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand into his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them and greeting them. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger into my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas said. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones told about in this book, but these are recorded so that you will believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing in him, you will have life. Bless these words to our use and understanding. One of the questions that's often asked in these times of crisis, in this time of pandemic, is where is God in all this? I'm sure that's what Thomas was wondering too, that week after Jesus' death, where he had not experienced any signs of God's presence as far as he was aware. Thomas was in a situation where he lived in fear, just like the disciples did. Fear of even the possibility of losing his own life. Living in fear, isolated, away from it all, not knowing what the future holds, certainly describes the situation that we find ourselves in at times during this time of crisis. And yet, Thomas eventually does get his sign in the gathering of the disciples. Jesus greets him and meets him there in the midst of his fellow friends and family in the faith and says, peace be with you, offering him comfort in his time of isolation, in his time of not knowing. So where's God? Same place. God is often found in those moments where we're surprised or where there's a string of coincidence that in hindsight seem to be directing us. One author has called these God winks. God is present sometimes in decisions that are made that aren't necessarily tied to anything. And yet when we look back at them, we discover how wonderfully crafted they were to prepare us for this situation. I think about our own St. John's. Back at the beginning of Lent, I was trying to think of something different that we could do for our Lenten reflection. And I came upon this idea of community. What gift would you wish for our community? And we wrote them all down on little pieces of paper and I put them into a chain, a paper chain, and put the paper chain on the altar. And all of them expressed more unity, more care, more love. Well, a few weeks later, here we are, isolated in our homes, away from that altar, which still has that chain of prayers for community. An amazing thing, a surprise when you look back. A God wink moment, perhaps. But there are many things 
in the past few months that have been coming together, coalescing, if you like, to prepare us for this crisis. God is present in the blessing of those who are blessing others, who work for the blessing of others. God is present in our frontline workers. God is present in those who care enough to stay home to keep themselves and others safe. God is present in those who keep the vulnerable fed. I want you to think about what it would be like if you couldn't find food and you couldn't afford food. To know that there is a place of people who are volunteering to make sure that you can get food, that you can make it through this time of crisis. Certainly that is God's presence for you in that situation. It's in that love and compassion that we find God. Where is God? When we live God lives of compassion, when we li live lives of love, we find God here in the gift of ourselves. Same place Thomas found God, where we all can find God. God is in our midst when we live out the wisdom of God's kingdom. If we keep our hearts and our minds open, we will see that wisdom at work in our world, and that will give us peace, and that will give us comfort, because where God is, that is peace and comfort and hope. Amen. Let us pray. 
loving companion God. We give you thanks for the many ways in which you make your presence known in our lives. Through the love of those who surround us, through the care of those who are sacrificing their very lives to make sure that we stay healthy, that we stay safe, that we have enough food on our tables to eat and survive. We give you thanks for those who are showing their love by staying at home and protecting themselves and each other through their physical distancing. We pray that you would continue to bless all those who are working for us, as well as blessing us ourselves as we go through these difficult times. We know some are suffering from depression and illness due to the isolation, and we pray that they would find some respite in your care and the, in the love that is reaching out to them through telephone calls, video conferencing, and letters. We pray for our leaders that you would guide them to do, make the right decisions to best keep us all safe in this time. We pray for those who look to you for special needs. We pray for Betty, Gwen, Anne and Jerry, Rena and Ray, Marion, Francis, and those whom we name in our hearts. May they know your love and care from within them and the love that surrounds them. Grant wisdom to their caregivers that they may be restored to health and have hope in their lives. We thank you for each person watching this video today, and we pray that you would give them a special blessing, even as they are a blessing to others, as they too reach out and care for one another. We ask this all through Christ, our companion on the way, as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. Well, thank you again for being with us today. We hope that you received some blessing and comfort out of our service today. In this great season of Easter, we remember that when the doors were shut and the world was kept out, resurrection and life found the disciples. And now in this great season of Easter, when the church gathers in homes holding our breath as we wait with the world, when fears grow even on a path of faith and new questions abound, when suffering seems to overwhelm and our leaders seem to be lost, we know that resurrection and life will find us. When Christ gathers us up at the whole of creation, resurrection and life do find us. And we go knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God, that we have the spirit within us that empowers us and inspires us, and we have Christ as a friend and guide. We hope you enjoyed the service today and that you will like us and also subscribe to us so that you will be apprised of when our next uploads are put on the internet. And now in closing, a favorite Easter hymn.